Hello there, welcome to the clinic. So today we're going to be looking at ophthalmoscopy. We'll start off first with looking at the ophthalmoscope. We'll perform some ophthalmoscopy on some patients. And then finally we'll look at what we must do once ophthalmoscopy has been completed. Let's have a little look at the ophthalmoscope. So we have a range of four here the Well Shannon Pocket Ophthalmoscope, the Knight's one here, and a couple of Keeler models. Looking at this one here, which I've taken apart, we have your power source here, your battery or batteries. We have the screw cap there, with the charging portal here, if you're using a rechargeable battery. In the head of the ophthalmoscope is where you'll find the bulb. So that's how they're put together. Taking this Knight's model here, you can see the apertures that come with this one. You have red free, which is your green light, the target, large aperture, small round aperture and a slit. Have your protective window there. You have your focusing wheel there for optimal image quality. You need to go out of the standard range and you can sometimes flick the switch here and go even further with your lens powers. Okay, protective window and here are some of the filters that come with this model. You have your yellow light, cobalt blue, red free and standard white. So let's have a little look at this one in action. So that's your standard round large aperture. Your slit there. Target there. And just going back. Medium aperture. And smaller aperture there for looking at the macula and if we pop a filter on here so we have all the same apertures but now in red free filter so that's a brief look at the ophthalmoscope let's perform some ophthalmoscopy on some patients okay how are you Oh, very well, thank you. Excellent. So I'm going to be doing a test that looks at the health of the eye. I'm going to be using the light of the ophthalmoscope to check the external eye and then internally. Okay. Good. Okay. So there might come a point when I just have to move the lids, but I will let you know when that happens, all right? All right. Okay. So looking off into the distance, just remove your spectacles. Okay. So we're going to start off about this distance, just finding the red reflex from the retina. And from this distance, you can observe any potential problems with the crystalloid lens and it might be possible to see some vitreous opacities. I'm going to come in closer. Just look down for me now. And we're going to focus our attentions initially close up on the lids and lashes. So you want to be checking for any lumps or bumps or lesions. I'm just going to lift the lid around the lid areas. Look up. Remembering to change your focus to get the best view. 
kind of look down for a bit. Okay, so now focus our attention on the sclera and the conjunctiva. Looking at that white surface and the blood vessels that live there, looking up. And now to your left. Excellent. And to the right. So I'm going to cover all those zones. Just checking for any pathology. Now looking straight ahead. Okay. And now I'm just going to have a little look at the iris of the eye. That's the coloured part. And then just come back a little bit. Check for any potential loss of transparency as a result of any corneal issues if you just move left and right sometimes if you do see an opacity okay looking straight ahead you can check whether that's on the cornea or the lens and then for the crystalline lens let's come a little closer still look left right, checking for any opacities, look up and look down as I lift the lid and straight ahead. Now we can judge whether there's any sclerosis of the crystalloid lens as we come closer and focus on the fundus and have a nice crisp image there. estimation we have a clear crystalline lens and now the first thing I'm doing coming from the lateral side here is focusing on the optic nerve I'm just making some observations okay and if we bring it down to the smallest aperture you can ask the patient to look into the light. Focus on the fine vision area, the macula. And when we're looking at the macula, just want to be careful of the brightness of the light to blind the patient too much. Okay, now just I'm using right eye to his right eye. Okay, now just looking up to the ceiling, let's have a good look now at the fundus, at the peripheral retina. And looking up and left now. Now to your left. And up and right now. And to, to where my hand is on the right. To ensure that we cover all areas. And that we don't miss anything. Look straight down to the floor. This is where you're going to have to lift the lid. Have a look at the inferior retina. Okay, looking down and left. And down and right. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the green light, which is known as red free. Just looking straight ahead again in the distance. Now this is going to allow us to visualise the blood vessels in better detail as they show up black against a lighter retina. And we can check the AV ratio and any 
portuosity on the king, those kind of things. Okay, also, we can use the small aperture with the green light. Just looking into the light now. And this is also good for showing up any potential hemorrhages. That will also show up as black. That's the right eye completed, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're now performing ophthalmoscopy on a patient on the left eye. I'll use my left eye for her left eye. So I want the patient looking straight ahead, just at one point to begin with. Now just look down, just checking the lids and lashes. Look up. And don't be afraid to lower lids, look down and lift lids to miss any potential pathology ocular surfaces look to your right hand side and the left look straight ahead again a little closer looking through the lens at the vitreous humour. Okay, keep looking straight ahead at one point. Come in. Focus on the optic nerve. Keep the eye very still at one point. into the light for me now. Just watch the brightness of the light. Just turn it down slightly there. Straight ahead again to the distance. Just double check the optic nerve. Make all the assessments we need to. Okay, now we want to be looking at the peripheral retina. Let's look up to the scene. To be quite close, I'm looking through a keyhole. Checking the blood vessels, looking for any retinal pathology. Okay, look up and right for me. And up and left. Nasal retina, checking the temporal retina and the superior quadrants. Looking down for me. Now this is where we need to lift the lids. This lid will obscure the pupil. Covering all areas, look down and right. And down and left. Gently support the upper lid. Okay, look straight ahead off again. Now have a look with some green light, checking the retinal nerve fibres and the blood vessels in a little bit more detail. Blood vessels all now show up as a black colour. So we do the muscopy on the left eye, thank you. It is very important that you record your findings on your record card. Now I 
just want to show you this handwritten Ocular Health record card template. Now these record cards were particularly useful because you could illustrate your findings and the sections there and make some notes and annotations about what you found. So on this record card we use the right eye section at the top, Audi. The bottom is for the left, that's OS. You have your anterior portion here and the posterior portion of the right eye there. And for this record card, it's well designed because you have your prompts or the different things you want to comment on. So lids and lashes. You may have seen something up here. So then I draw out, for example, a Calaisian. Let's say what it is. And then I'd make some comments on the size, shape, for example. And for example, if we saw anything on the conjunctiva, on the nasal side, we can draw it out, say what it is, and talk about things such as size, shape, redness, just to name a few. So brilliant there, we're using the guide, and just looking at the posterior side, we have a part here for the optic nerve, which is essentially just a blow up of this part. And we could look at the media, such as the vitreous, CD ratio, shape and size of the optic nerve or the cup within, CD ratio, we can make an out there for example. We could look at the neural retinal rim tissue here and describe that. Venous pulse. The IV ratio of the blood vessels. So you could talk about that by drawing the vessels, commenting on the ratio. I'd also be looking for any tortuosity. And then some notes on the macular region there. And the peripheral retinal section here. So have you seen anything? peripheral retina. We want to label and describe. So that's just a brief overview of a template record card there and uh, we should always record our results in detail contemporaneously with your illustrations well labeled if possible.